Hi everybody, so we have come to the last lesson, chapter 6, on the topic of rhythm in Boleslavsky's acting, the first six lessons. We have come a long way, yada yada yada. Hmm. So, to conclude uh, this series of videos, I will do the usual things, uh, just highlight some passages or quotes from the chapter that I feel contains the essence of the message of the lessons that is being taught in this book and also like some thoughts I have about it. Uh, first of all, um, B is asked by the creature uh, what his definition of rhythm is and he says, the nearest I have come to it is the orderly measurable changes of all the different elements comprised in a work of art, provided that all those changes progressively stimulate the attention of the spectator and lead invariably to the final aim of the artist. And uh, he's asked, what if I'm creating chaos? How can it be orderly and measurable? And B says, you forget the word changes. Your work of art, chaos, if it is such, must consist of a number of conflicting actions. So conflict is the essence of story. They may be as disorderly as your genius will let them be, but the changes from one to another must be orderly. And that is exactly what only a genius can make them. So if you remember Michelangelo's frescoes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, you remember that from the floor, looking upward, they give a perfect impression of chaos, a prototype of creation. Take a reproduction of those frescoes and spread it before you on the table. One look will be sufficient to convince you that it is chaos composed of the most orderly and measurable changes of all the elements involved. Um, another sentence. To exist is to have rhythm. So this is very interesting uh, in, the, in, light that, in light of the fact that the book was written sometime in the early 20th century, back when quantum mechanics is still very much in its infancy. So I don't know I don't know if B is like um, updated of the latest findings in quantum mechanics. Uh, to exist is to, is to have rhythm is like one of the most profound statements in the book. There are many profound statements in the book, but this is one of the most profound. Um, basically, everything in life, or rather everything in existence, has its own rhythm, right? A thing that does not have rhythm, or rather, uh, the more rhythm something has the more alive it is but even inanimate objects uh, things that are not alive so to speak has its own rhythm if you see it at the subatomic level right so um, living bodies have its own rhythm the heartbeat the electrical imp impulses running through the nervous system and all that uh, mm, mechanical objects machines that we create also have its own rhythms uh, even the earth, the atmosphere, the environment has its own rhythms, weather has its own patterns. Um, but in anime objects, the rhythm is not so noticeable unless you go down to the subatomic level. Yeah, so the fabric of existence, or rather the pattern of existence, basically is it's rhythm itself. Then the creature asks, what are the elements of rhythm? Very simple. Basically, in the context of the, the form of the story being told, it can be the tone, the tune, the movement, the form, the word, the action, the color anything that a work of art can be made from. So, in, in, in my own words, rhythm is basically pattern, right? Um, without, uh, we, without an understanding of rhythm, without an understanding of uh, the, the patterns of a story, uh, an artist, a creator, an actor does not truly understand um, how to produce that work of art. Uh, because it is one thing to observe something and copy it, right? Without noticing the elements of it, without noticing the patterns and the details of it. It is another level of understanding for you to recognize the patterns and understand the common rhythms that exist in a particular work of art that also universally exists in other works of art, right? But what makes a particular work of art unique is uh, it uses the same uh, principles and patterns or rhythms but expresses it, iterates it in its own way. 
So another thing that sort of uh, uh, sparks my mind is rhythm not only applies on the level of the individual actor or one role in the entire story. Rhythm also applies to my understanding of the word rhythm in this book to the structure of the story itself. Right, even, yeah, stories have, have its own structure. So, the structure of a story also follows a certain rhythm. Uh, the inciting incident has to happen at a certain point in time. The, the introduction of the mentor figure or the introduction of the conflicting figure, the antagonist, has to happen at a certain point in time. Uh, the, the lowest point of the story also has to happen, happen at a certain point in time. Uh, and then the resolution, the conflict, the, the climax, and then the epilogue also happens at a certain point in time. So this is the rhythm of the story. Uh, and to understand this, right, us as actors and characters and uh, people who play individual roles, um, a small role in, in the greater part of the story, also has to understand that uh, stories are actually fractals in nature. They are fractal-like, just as anything else in the world um, there's there's an ancient saying as above so below so basically from the macros macrocosmic scale the patterns that exist in the macrocosmic scale are reflected in the microcosmic scale and the patterns or the actions of the agents within the microcosmic scale the smaller scale is somehow reflected and can affect the mi macrocosmic scale okay, this is like one of the ancient philosophies uh, which I can't remember where it came from so similarly in stories, storytelling, um, the actor, the character has to understand that he or she is part of a whole. Right? Which brings me to the next um, passage that I want to quote, which is near to the end of the chapter. Be sensitive to every change in the manifestation of their existence. Answer that change always with a new and higher level of your own rhythm. This is the secret of existence, perseverance and activity. This is what the world really is, from the stone up to the human soul. The theatre and the actor enter this picture only as a part, but the actor cannot portray the whole if he does not become a part. See, this ties in with exactly what I said just now. Uh, like, this is one of the beautiful patterns of life. To be a master, one must first be a novice. To be great, one must first start at a lower level. To be whole, one must first recognise she or he is a small part of the whole. And the actor cannot portray the whole if he does not first become a part. So uh, let me just go on a bit of a philosophical tangent now. The universe is fractals, as I said just now. Um, the universe is holographic. In a tiny part contains the entire whole. So in the entire journey of one particular character, especially the protagonist, especially the important players of the story, the character arc of the of the actors of the, of the characters in the story actually reflect or rather effect has a direct correlation with the changes that happen in the entire universe of the story. And uh, this is also another secret of rhythm, which I, I mean, I don't see it in the passages of the book, but I kind of like intuitively grasp it. Uh, if we are wondering as actors how to create a great rhythm in one's acting, in one's performance and storytelling that would captivate the audience, one of the ways I suppose is to look inward rather than outward. Or rather, one of the ways to, is to look inward, right? You can explore that. Um, look at our own life and observe the patterns and rhythms in our own life. How uh, changes happen, how things evolve in our life, how some elements in our lives repeat themselves. But even though they repeat, they actually also evolve. Like I might meet different people in my life right now who may resemble other people in my past 10 years ago and and the deja vu i'm experiencing is sometimes crazy like i literally meet people who look like friends i've met before 10 years ago but their personalities are different or i i met i meet people who have exact personalities and even voice patterns as people i know 10 years ago which i have drifted apart from so it's it's crazy how how i mean if you are more observant of like lives uh, your own life story is 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 crazy how you know all these things happen in your life, right? So all of these things happen with a rhythm. Like um, in life, sometimes you experience bad days, but usually after those bad days, there are good days, 
and then when you experience a, a certain peak in your life like you think that you have peaked in your career or your studies or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve and then suddenly everything comes crashing down right or you know you stay stuck you feel stuck that you want to get to the next level right so all these patterns right are actually life telling you you know uh, to uh, take the story of your life in a different direction to make your story of your life more interesting right uh, it's, it's freaking crazy um, yeah I mean thinking about it it's quite beautiful I uh, I can't I can't overstate how crazy the pattern is. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I just I just had some flu medication, so I'm a bit drowsy. Uh, but I'm actually kind of high. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I will just conclude this video. Oh my god, it's so long already. Uh, yeah. With a thanks for listening to me and giving me the opportunity to learn, being a part of this, uh, for me to learn and relearn this wisdom. I love you all 3000. So I end my video with uh, my own rendition of some very common wise phrases. Know thyself and to thine own self be true. And with that truth, the truth shall set you free to create. Thank you. I love you 3000.